Well, hello, hello, Star Wars fans. It is none other than Matt Haywood from EntertainmentBuddha.com coming back for our third dedicated Star Wars BuddhaCast. And as always, I am joined by my Star Wars partner in crime, Mr. Nick Caminita. How's it going, Nick? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. I'm glad we're back on the train doing these pretty often. We're trying. I mean, we still haven't hit the bi-weekly thing, but I had to fly out to Cupertino last week, and, you know, you've got your own job in life to attend to. So, you know what, people? Sometimes schedules get thrown into the garbage, but we're here, we're dedicated, and we want to talk Star Wars. So today, um, we decided, instead of picking on other people's speculations for what may or may not happen in Star Wars Episode Eight and beyond, Nick and I, we're going to go ahead and lay down our own speculations for people to shit on. In particular, our speculations will focus on the Grandmaster Jedi himself, Mr. Lonesome, Luke Skywalker. So we're just going to kind of pull shit out of our ass, throw darts at a dartboard, see what sticks. So we just want to know... Uh, what is he going to be doing in Episode Eight? I mean, obviously, in Episode Seven, we saw him for all of about a minute. He didn't speak. Uh, the only movement he had was a turn to camera, and he took his hood down and made some emotional-looking faces. So we still don't know much about this version of Luke Skywalker. We're still left with the guy that we knew in Return of the Jedi that officially became a Jedi Knight when he redeemed his father, Anakin Skywalker. So, Nick... I don't know, man. You, you kind of came up with the topic. I'm not throwing you under the bus here, but l- let's see. What what do you want to see with Luke Skywalker in Episode Eight? I mean, what, what how do you think it should go? How do you think his story should play out? I, I mean, I definitely think that there's a lot of room to develop his character more. I mean, like you mentioned in Episode Six, we got to see him kind of become the Jedi Knight. Now he's older. He's the Grand Master. He's trying to reform the Jedi Order. So... I'd like to see kind of how he's matured as a Jedi and how obviously um, Kylo's fall to the dark side has affected him. Um, I think that's going to be the most interesting thing is to see how he moves on and how he decides to, you know, continue building this new Jedi order now that he's already had one of his pupils um, fall to the dark side. So his character development, I think, is, is going to be very interesting, especially focusing on his mental state and um, his view of of the Force and of, you know, of the New Jedi Order. Yeah, he really did kind of fuck things up, I guess. I mean, I don't know. It's one of those things. Do you blame the educator? Or do you blame the student? But Luke, at the end of Jedi, he was it. Besides some Force ghosts and obviously his sister, who has made a conscious decision not to perf- pursue her Force affinity. Uh, that's just something Leia has obviously has never wanted to dive into. Who knows why? She likes to deal with the politics and the the, the, the army being a general, whatever. So Luke was a guy and he wanted to start a new school. And he does. And it sounds like at least from the minimal amount of shit we got in The Force Awakens that he did start a school and was training young Jedis to become the next crop of Jedi Knights in the universe. But unfortunately, his own kin... One Ben Solo was a rotten egg. We know that Snoke was working on Ben from an early age, and obviously that played into his betrayal of Grandmaster Luke and his upstart, I don't even know if we call him Padawans anymore, Archolites, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, he is probably pretty fucked up in the head at this point in time. He did put himself into a uh, a self-induced kind of a ban on the galaxy he hit himself on this planet didn't want even his sister to know where he was at uh r2 had an idea where he was at but even the map was scattered so yeah he he was so affected by what happened with ben that he became a hermit just like uh, his first mentor old ben of the dune sea yeah and i think that it's going to be interesting to see um, the parallels that they draw between him and Ben and also him and Yoda. Because if we're, if we're looking at this new trilogy as kind of a mirroring of the original trilogy, um, as we all know in episode five, um, you have Ben that's acting as kind of a, a, a guiding mentor through being a force ghost. And then you have Yoda as the force mentor, kind of 
building up his force affinity, teaching him in the ways of how to use the force in the physical world. Um, so he's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he kind of plays the balance between those two characters from the original trilogy, because, you know, you know, all that Ray's gone through already finding out she's a force user at such an, you know, a, a late stage in her life. Well, not really late stage, but you know, she, w- she wasn't a child when she, well, found yeah, out. it was like Luke. I mean, he was a, a teen farm boy, just like she was a teen scavenger. So it, yeah, about the same. It doesn't follow the formula that Mace Windu was trying to enforce on Anakin and, you know, the, the preexisting Jedi temple and, and their practices, but Hey, it's, it's a new era, right? Yeah. So to see how he kind of balances out those roles of being like a, like a straightforward kind of teacher and, you know, this is how you use, you know, the force to manipulate objects and this is how you use it to, to manipulate minds. And then also being kind of like a, like a good mentor and a good guiding force for her overall perspective on how the force is supposed to be used and, and the purpose of, you know, Jedi and the galaxy, I guess you would say. Um, and, and to see if he can handle that, if he can take in all of that, responsibility and train this new person um pretty soon after i mean we don't know how long kylo had been you know a part of the first order we don't know how old he was when he fell at least i don't know i don't know if they, if they came out and said that yet but i would assume that it's it's probably it was- been a few a few years but, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, was he 10, 11, 12? Was he a, a teenager? I, I, wouldn't, I'd, I wouldn't think he fell in his 20s. I think at that point he was probably already Kylo Ren, but it's a good thing to think of. As well as uh, the point you made about Luke and how he's going to have to channel his mentors. Now, how do you think... How do you think we'll see that portrayed? Do you think he's going to be more like Yoda and just kind of spit out all the philosophical force stuff and get her to embrace just the power of the force itself? Or do you think he'll get into some combat training like Obi-Wan introduced to him, even though, I mean, let's, let's be real. Luke's lightsaber training is very minimal in the original trilogy. It, yeah. It's him versus that remote and that's it. Then all of a sudden he can fight with a lightsaber. So do you think a, that they're going to put more focus on Ray's, combat skills or do you think they're like hey she already, she already beat a fucking dark side master almost without having any training with a lightsaber let's not even worry about that let's just focus on her embracing the concept of the force what it means to be in tune with the galaxy and everyone around you shit like that what do you think i i really think that he's gonna go for more of the the mental approach like you like you just said kind of teaching her about the force in almost almost like a theory kind of way. Because, I mean, I know you only got to see his face for 15 seconds, you know, at the end of the last movie. But to me, it almost looked like, you know, he was upset that somebody found him. Like, he's got this look on his face. Oh, like, really? That, that's an interesting take. Because I was like, I took it as him almost recognizing Ray, or at least sensing her, like... All right, she she made it, or this this force person that has awoken the force again. They've they've made it to me. Yeah, you, you looked at it as like, hey, man, get off my fucking rock. Well, not really, not so much that, but like, you know, oh he shit, knew here that she we was go. Gonna, yeah, yeah, like, like oh he, shit, he, it it begins now. Yeah, he he was more concerned about this is now I have to get my shit together and it's time to do this. <laughs> You yeah, know? like Luke's just been hanging out on that island, scratching his balls, drinking blue milk and taking death sticks, just having a good time. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. All right. Vacation over. Yeah, I guess I guess I should go help this resistance possibly stop this first order thing I've been hearing about. Yeah, I, I think, too. I mean, this is the way that I look at it. If if he was putting together this this, you know, new Jedi order and he had a bunch of pupils, I imagine that he would have taken a very practical approach to how to teach it. So like a lot of lightsaber combat, a lot of practical use of the force. And just because the way that he was mentored, it, it was all so short and it happened so quickly that they didn't really have time to sit no, you're down right. and you're explain right. I mean, to he, him. He didn't get a proper Jedi training. Uh, yeah. Not that you could probably call Jedi training proper when you look at what happened to the Jedi. I mean, they were so fucking stupid that they let their order get taken down by one dude. 
so yeah, he, he he didn't have the tutelage that Obi Wan would have had, or even Yoda, or really even Anakin. I mean, Anakin came in at ten, but he still got the 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 Padawan to Knight to Master type of training where Luke yeah. was just like, hey, this shit runs in your family. You're gonna be good at it. Oh yeah, hey, you're a Jedi Knight now, and eventually you can make yourself Jedi Master or Jedi Master Supreme because we're all dead and you're the only one left, anyways. So it is. So as far as scenes we see involving Luke, I I mean obviously the opening shot of Episode Eight is going to be in space, right? I mean that's that's the go-to. There's always every Star Wars movie has opened in space. Am I, I'm correct, right? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, I mean, sure. There's well. always a shot of space, and it may transition into a planet. But I, I just have a feeling that we're going to get back to Luke and Ray almost instantly once Episode Eight begins. I mean, that's that that scene that Rian Johnson shared from the first day of filming was that actual encounter again. So obviously, they were you know filming some photography for that particular meetup. So do you think we're going to get right into Luke and Ray right off the bat, or do you think they're going to maybe? focus on the bad guys to show us where they're at or where the resistance are at. How do you think that's going to play into episode eight? I think it's going to open up and it's going to, you're going to see Kylo and, and Snoke or, or something of the first order first. Like you're going to see their situation with their, you know, kind of like, a... kind of like empire where they lost at the end of episode four. And then the first shot is bam, vader's star destroyer sending out probes looking for the rebels yeah yeah i think it's going to be something similar to that so it's like almost you see like a regrouping effort on the first order's part and then we'll get into um luke and ray obviously i mean episode seven let's just say it ended on a cliffhanger which like you know that's really hard to kind of process over two years um so people are going to want to jump right back into that interaction right, that's as what soon I'm saying. as possible. Because uh, uh, that's me. I was like, I, I want to continue that scene. I want to see what happens next. So I, I do think it's going to happen early on, but I think your take is probably how it'll play out. Here's a shot of what the First Order's doing now. Oh, by the way, let's get back to kind of like a, you know, a flashback to these two, their first encounter and where it went from there. Yeah. Uh, so once we get to that part, do we, I mean, is there going to be a discussion on Luke's past while he why he is on this island which is supposedly the home of the first ever jedi temple you know what what's he been doing what happened with kylo do you think we might get some flashbacks of kylo's turn or maybe luke doing some fighting action supposedly as a maybe not old man luke now but in between jedi and force awakens i mean what what are you thinking or what do you want to see i definitely want to see you know Parts of Kylo's training, especially like when he was a child, maybe show when when he was first brought to Luke to, you know, to get his training started. So we have an idea of, you know, just how long Kylo slash Ben has been acclimated with the force, because we really don't have any idea. We don't know, like you were mentioning before, if, if Luke is kind of running this thing like the the Knights of the Old Republic did where they were taking kids in at a very young age and training them all the way through or if he kind of adjusted it you know did he take Kylo in when he was you know 12 years old or whatever well yeah it so, sounds like just from the novelization and really the film it sounds like Leia knew her son had issues mm -hmm. she she could feel the pull and and this comes from the novelization but she told, tells Han, like, yo, Snoke's been working our son over for years. I mean, ever ever since he knew he existed, he knew his power potential. He knew the inner conflict, so he worked on him. So it sounds like he probably was an adolescent, not a very young kid, but maybe Anakin's age. There's another kind of a parallel to those two characters. When she was like, you know what, I, I don't know what to do. I'm going to send him to fucking Uncle Luke, who obviously is... Uh, the all-knowing about the Jedi and the Force at this point in time, maybe he can help him out. And obviously we know that didn't go so well. So yeah, I, I want to see that 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 maybe he, him show up. And I don't think they're going to do full-on scenes of the past. I think it hopefully it's a little bit more than Ray's flashback and it's not just shots of scenes. I would like a little more flesh or a little more meat on the bones if we do delve into Luke's past, at least to the point, the, the, the past or in the fall of his jedi academy i mean i think they have to portray that somehow yeah and i i really think that they're the flashbacks are going to focus on not really the training but 
those moments of conflict that you you know that you mentioned. Yeah, that, like t- tense moments between him and Kylo. You know, maybe Ray says something to Luke during training where, and we've seen this in film before, where a light goes off and he thinks back to a similar moment with Kylo and he's, he's reflecting on it going like, damn, I fucked that up with him. I can't do that with her. And by what she's telling me, she's on the right track. Maybe I'm doing my job right this time. Yeah, for sure. Um, I also want to see kind of, you know, what Luke has been doing between episodes six and seven. And I know that's a huge gap. I mean, we're talking what, 30 years. Um, between yeah, I mean, the two what, movies. what did he do right after Jedi? And there's that shattered, shadow or shattered Empire comic book run showed a little bit, but it, it was like immediately after Jedi. Literally, he mm-hmm. went on a, a few missions and helped clean up some uh, Empire lingerers. Yeah. But yeah, w- what the hell did he do? You know, when did he finally sit down and, and start the the academy? Was there a talk with Leia about the academy? Did he try to get her into it? This, that, and the other thing. I mean, what the hell has he been doing up until? Obviously, when he banished himself after the fall of Kylo. Now, like, this is something that I had just thought of, you know, a couple of days ago when we first brought up the idea of of doing kind of this Luke-centric cast. And it's that, you know, if he had this idea for the Academy, you know, at some period between the two movies, then I, I, I really can't believe that Kylo, that Ben would be his first student. Like, he would have had, like, I, I feel like he would have been you know, pound and sand looking for force users out there as soon as he could, like as soon as everything was cleaned no, up. No, I, I think you're right. I think he had a, a established school. I don't know if they call it the Jedi Academy, the Skywalker Academy, whatever. But I'm, it sounded like he did try to reestablish the order as best he could by himself. But when he agreed to take on his nephew, that's when all hell broke yeah. loose. And it, it, Ben obviously killed all of his students became Kylo Ren, you know, signed up with the First Order, started the Knights of Ren, which eventually we need to have a podcast about because I still don't know who the fuck they are or how they play into it. So, yeah, no, I think you're right. I think Luke took his charge very seriously to rebuild the Jedi Order. Unfortunately, he got that one bad egg that really fucked it up and obviously screwed him up mentally to the point where he's like, I'm washing my hands of all this bullshit. I'm worse off to people than if I try to help. I'm just going to go hide and pray and build rock statues using my force powers. (laughs) Now, you see, like, I think that depending on when he started it, there could be. Now, we don't know if there are other Jedi out there. I mean, obviously, we had the scene with Han that was like telling Ray that, you know, oh, yeah, you know, the Jedi and the Force, it's all real. So there's a sense that there that people don't know about any Jedi, but I think that Luke has already trained people. There are already knights out there. Now, are they as forward-facing and as prominent ah, as they there were? There you go. Interesting. Yeah, so, you know, they're not obviously not as prominent as they were in the old in the in the prequels that you don't have a jedi council set up that's working with the new republic government to do anything like that but i think that he has people that are already fully force trained either you know advanced padawans or all you know already crowned jedi knights and so while you're on this point could those people possibly be who ray sees in her vision in the rain they could be and i think that that's going to play you know, a major role in this next film is that we're going to find out that Kylo wasn't the first student and that there there are other Jedi out there that Rey can turn to or that, you know, are going to kind of bring themselves to the light once Luke comes back into the fray. Um, It would just make sense to me because, like we were saying, there's just so much time between those two movies. It, It would be weird that he just, like, his first student was his nephew and that he failed immediately. So uh, that's where I think it's going to go. Yeah, I, think right. I mean, yeah, how many how many people did he train before Ben showed up that actually made it or, or left the academy b- before Ben showed up, to your point? Obviously, I mean, I don't know if he would have just kept all these kids or Force sensitives there, you know, outside of their own free will. I mean, I'm sure once they wanted to leave or he thought they were ready, they probably took off. So there very well could be some people that – have been trained by Luke, but have also kind of stayed in the shadows, either at his command or 
they're just scared shitless of the First Order, and if they get found out, they know they're going to have to deal with Kylo Ren, and he's obviously a pretty powerful dude, except when it comes to facing Miss Ray. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's one theory that I've been kind of playing around with, and I think it would be interesting, because you've never, I mean, aside from the prequels, you've never really seen a, you know... Which, and let's face the prequels botched that completely. I oh, mean, yeah. The, the, the fucking Genonotion arena scene is a goddamn CG mess of idiots flinging lightsaber blades with VFX blades grafted in there. I mean, it just... It, it, it never felt like the the Jedi Order we were, you know, kind of how it was built up in the in the original films. It just felt like a bunch of slapdicks. I mean, they were they were slapdicks. Yeah. Yoda and Mace Windu, right under their nose, allowed one man to completely crumble the Republic and the Order. When he went to confront Sidious with Jedi Masters, I mean, Sidious wiped out three Jedi Masters in one stroke. Yeah, and it, it's like it was what the re- fuck is wrong with these people? I mean, he he stabs that, Kit Fisto, he stabbed the other dude, and then Mace gave him a fight and and really had him beat until Dummy Anakin came in and and fucked that up. But yeah, they, they the Jedi's were never, and and really even the Sith for that matter were never made to be as important or badass as they were uh, kind of made out to be in the original trilogy. Yeah, so I mean, this is a good chance to kind of redeem that, to kind of show that Jedi aren't just some people who can like, oh no, my back's turned and I got shot by three stormtroopers. <laughs> like, shit. it's just so. I think it would be interesting if they went that route. Now, I mean, in in terms of Luke himself, I feel like he's probably the reason that he's on this other planet. You know, he may have he may still have had contact with those other Jedi that he was training. And, and then when this all went down, he's just like, look, I got to get away from it all. You know, this is his biggest failure and he wants to distance himself as much. Right. Well, they also from... the opening crawl seven. They, they pretty much say that the first order's main goal in life is to solely hunt down Luke Skywalker. So you put two and two together. He's like, okay, if their main mission is to kill me, I can't be around any of my friends. I can't be around the resistance. I can't be around other force users. I need to remove myself completely from the situation and try to get as many people that I love, know, want to protect out of danger as possible. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that you can make a, a pretty good argument that we may see other Jedi in here. And I don't think that would be a bad thing. I think that there are people out there, you know, who feel that adding other Jedi into this movie could kind of somehow lessen the um the importance of Ray or the importance of, of, of Luke as a character. But I think it would just it would make a good point to what Luke was doing after yeah. episode six and then yeah, we'll, kind we'll of see. I mean see. if anything they might not be full on perfected Jedi. They might not have lightsabers because who knows how kyber crystals are are shared these days. I mean look at Kylo Ren's lightsaber. The reason it's all fucked up like that is because he he's basically build it off of ancient ancient sith uh blueprints i mean because he doesn't have the modern either know-how or technology to make a real deal lightsaber like his grandfather's yeah that's why it's so chaotic looking it's just it's like a half-ass put together lightsaber and he's gonna have to have a new one because i'm pretty sure he lost his other one or i think you pointed out before i I think think ray almost snaps it in half yeah i think ray destroyed it in the fight during their fight so, uh, speaking of fighting, do you think we will get to see Luke fight, either with his lightsaber or maybe going kind of Dooku Yoda-ish and having a kind of a Force Powers brawl with anybody? The, is it too uh, early in Episode Eight for him to fight? I think that you're definitely going to see some Force using from him, just because y- you can't have him in the movie and, and not have him do anything. I think he's going to fight somebody. I think... I want to, I want to see him. I want to see him bust out his lightsaber. I've, I mean, since I was a kid, Luke's personal lightsaber that he created in between Empire and Jedi was was my favorite. A because it was the first time we saw a green lightsaber in the original trilogy. I mean, now kids these days agree with the prequels. It, it's no big deal. I mean, green, fucking purple, which is still stupid and. And blue lightsabers, and just the design of his lightsaber it was like a mix of his dad's and Obi Wan's first lightsaber. So I, I just want to see him whip out a saber again, a to see if it is that still that same saber, or b if he's made a new one. And I, I want to see Luke fight 
I mean, again, we, his his best fight was against Vader and Jedi. I mean, in an Empire, it really wasn't a fight. It was more his dad just dicking with him. Yeah. But I want to see Jedi Master Luke whip out that lightsaber a little bit, maybe channel Qui-Gon or early Obi-Wan or even uh, his dad a little bit in, in some lightsaber fights. But I don't know if we'll see that. I just... I don't even know if Luke's going to get brought into the Resistance fold in Episode Eight. I mean, do you think him and Ray eventually will leave and join up with Leia and them, or do you think Luke's just going to be kind of the Yoda, the training guy, the wise voice, and eventually Ray's going to get pulled away like Luke was to go help her friends? No, I think he's going to get pulled back in the fold. There's going to be some event that happens. You know, the First Order is going to pull something, and he's going to come back, and he's going to have that reunion with Leia. And um, I think that's also going to lead to his fight scene because I want to see him fight, too. My only apprehension is that, you know, obviously Mark Hamill's an older guy now. If you looked at him, he wasn't like in real good shape. But then again, for episode seven, he didn't need to be. He just needed to stand there. So they'll maybe... figure it out, man. They made Christopher Lee fight in in the prequels yeah. and he was like 90 and and. Some of it was like, yeah, whatever. I can tell that's fake, but time and technology has gotten even better. So I'm not worried about an old man fighting. There is a balance they have to incorporate. You can't make a decrepit old guy. Well, I guess you can. They did it with Yoda. Well, He, he went from they... a geriatric 800-year-old little dude with a cane to get around to throwing it down and doing fucking acrobatics all over this room. Oh, yeah. He's like, Jesus. And then you also had that shit show of a fight that you talked about earlier between Sidious and Mace Windu, where like at the last minute, George Lucas was like, okay, we had the stunt double in to do all the stuff for you, um, Ian McDermott, but now we want you to do the whole fight. So we just, we're just going to have the camera zoomed in on your faces to where we can't see anything. Yeah. We'll, do, we'll do one zoom out where you do this little weird CG flip off of a chair and then you know, it just, it was, that was a terrible fight. So I don't want to see something like that to where no. like, you know, if they're going to do it, do it like you said, like, you know, with no, the I, you know, Chris we, I almost want to see him fight like Darth Vader. I mean, when, when we watched Darth Vader fight in the original trilogy, it was, it was effortless for him because he was so fucking powerful. I mean, the whole time he's fighting his son in both movies, he's using one hand. Mm-hmm. You know, Luke's sitting there with both hands on the saber, using all his might and effort to even try to parry his blows. And Vader the whole time just like, wah, wah, yep, whatever, wah, wah, okay, force power this, let me throw this at you. I think that's more of what we'd see of Luke, just because he is so fucking powerful at this point. He doesn't have to rely on his, maybe his physical ability, more his uh, his his force abilities and just... All his years of learning and, and channeling the Force and his midichlorians <laughs> to uh, kind of get the edge over his combat or his um, enemies. So, I don't know. I, yeah. I do want to see the dude do some action, though. Yeah, um, for sure. And you know what I think would be great? This is something that we talked about on the previous cast, you know, whether they're going to bring in a, a, a Mara Jade type character, you know, to be Luke. Yeah, true. I mean, back to our other cast... Uh, Ray's origins. I mean, if he is her father, obviously we we need to see how that came to be. And I would love it if, obviously, we have Laura Dern that was just cast in this movie. If she was to play that type of character and she was to follow the Mara Jade kind of um, arc where she was an Imperial assassin before, it would be incredible to see, you know those two kind of reunite her being dark side, him being light side, and then having those two fight each other. And then, you know, what comes out of her from there? Does he defeat her and then pull her back to the light? Does she kill him and then add that extra dynamic into Ray's character where now she has her mother, who is a a dark side force user that's, you know, fighting for the first order who just killed her father. Like, that could you could have some heavy shit like that in there if they if they went with that. Yeah, story I mean, line. with that we almost need a Luke standalone film at that point. I mean, I think it would warrant one. Uh, right now, the only standalones that are guaranteed are Rogue One, and then Han Solo. Han Solo is Boba Fett a guarantee or not? I mean, the last time that I heard about it was like uh, almost a year and a half ago. So I don't know if they're yeah. if they're still moving forward with it or not, but. I mean, yeah, I, I've always, I mean, I've always liked Luke. When it comes down to the aesthetics of the universe, I've always been a Empire guy because I think their shit looks way cooler. <laughs> uh, but deep down, 
outside of Vader. I mean, I loved Vader to death, and the love has been lessened a little bit after the prequels and getting to see the person he was, and he's basically just a whiny little bitch that is scared of loss, and I mean, it just really diminished the character in my mind, but yeah, I always, I always liked Luke. You know, yeah, that's who I identified with as a little kid. Like, yeah, I want, I want to be Luke. I want to get out of this fucking house. I want to do something special. I want to fly spaceships. I want to fight people with lightsabers. So, I, I would definitely watch standalones on Luke's. But uh, to your point, if we, if he is Ray's dad, that they're gonna have to show some sort of flashback as as how that came to be. Yeah, and you know, obviously the other, um, the other fight that he could get into is with Kylo. You know previous master versus you know apprentice obviously we had that fight when you had um obi-wan and anakin in, in episodes three and in episode four all right so when, if we get to that it, it could not it wouldn't be an episode three fight because that was no, when no. they were you know at somewhat the same age it would have to be more like episode four where that wasn't a fight either i mean obi-wan essentially made the decision to sacrifice himself to let Luke and them escape first and because he knew that if he you know channeled his spirit into a force ghost he would actually serve Luke better that way to train him because then he could be with him at all times in his head you know use the force Luke blah 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 all that fun shit so I mean do we see Luke potentially sacrificing himself in episode eight does he die is that too early I mean does he die period in this new trilogy I I really have a feeling that he's gonna die I, and I think he's so, gonna die in this movie. So you he, think eight's it? Yeah, he has to. To me, like if you're gonna if you're gonna make it mirror the original trilogy, and then you're gonna have him be there for Ray the best that he can, I think you have to do it that way. So you're telling me they're gonna they not only killed Han Solo, but they're gonna kill Luke Skywalker too? Uh, they yeah yeah man, <laughs> some heavy some heavy shit. You're gonna have a lot of people uh, crying in these movie boy, theaters when, uh, when Luke boy. Skywalker goes down. I mean, I'm not saying you're not. I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I, I it's gonna be. I tough. could see Luke getting waxed in in episode eight for sure. Yeah, I could see him living too, and just again maybe not being the lead, being the Yoda more or less, just kind of providing that that guiding force. Who, who mm -hmm. knows, man? That's why we sit here and we we have these Budacasts to speculate on shit, yeah. especially on shit that isn't real life. That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I love it's getting. This passionate over fake ass shit that people make up in their head. Yeah, man. I mean, and if you look at the old EU, that was something that they could never grapple with. They couldn't kill any of the main three. Han Solo never died. Luke Skywalker never died. Leia never died. So, like, already... Well, they did, they did get the balls to kill Chewie, right? Yeah, they did kill Chewie. During the, like, the Yuzom Bong invasion or whatever yeah, the hell that was. Yeah, yeah. He went out like a bad motherfucker, though. He had a whole planet fall on him. So, like, and <laughs> he saved he saved Han and Leia's youngest kid. So, like, there we go. he went out like a like a champ. But, I mean, you've already had Han Solo killed in this one. And, and you know, now this is, this is what it's going to be. This, like, these movies are basically a transitional period between... Right. The old legacy and and now the new the new yeah. characters. I mean, this this is it. This is new canon. I mean, this is this is the stuff we can debate. The EU stuff we can bring up and reference, but it's it's no longer holds up in Star Wars court. So yeah, exactly. But so speaking of the expanded stuff, man, I don't know if you get into them or anyone listening, but I highly recommend the new Star Star Wars comic series. Uh, just the the Star Wars, the Vader. Uh, there's a new Chewie one. There was a Lando one, and there's even a a Kanan one for from Star Wars Rebels, and they're all just, in my opinion, fantastic. Especially the the Star Wars and the Vader one, and they did this Vader down crossover. But it, it, the reason I'm bringing this up because when you're talking about Chewie going out like a badass, he has some fantastic panels in these comics showing his badassery. That, that's why I brought it up. But you should check them out. I mean, they it is canon, remember, and it it shows a lot of stuff happening in between. A New Hope, and Empire, and, and shit like that. Between Vader and his quest to hunt down the pilot that blew up the Death Star. So, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to start reading them soon because I know that you know, you know, one of my friends brought them up to me right before um, Episode Seven release, and he's like, "Yeah, man, I mean, this shit's legit." And 
I think he, you know, everybody was kind of nervous because they dropped it from Dark Horse and now Marvel has them. But from, yeah, from what you say and from what I hear from other people, they're fucking incredible. No, it's it's good stuff. The, the, the Vader run is just amazing. I mean, because it, it, it focuses on the relationship between him and Palpatine, how Palpatine constantly was trying to get him killed in the guise of he's testing him. Because, and I think we talked about this a few casts ago, Palpatine wanted Anakin Skywalker, but he wanted him in full capacity. What he got in Darth Vader was not ultimately the apprentice he wanted. He knew that Anakin lost a ton of his ability when he essentially became a machine, so he was always looking for his replacement. That's kind of what these comics focus on. Vader trying to outdo the Emperor, and the Emperor trying to essentially have Vader killed. Yeah, and it's, it's it's fantastic the relationship between those two. I mean, it was always it, it was a hate hate essentially, which makes sense for Sith users in the dark side. So. Yeah, that, I definitely want to read that Vader run because I was always really interested in that even prior to, um, like the new release through Disney and everything. It's just the history of of Vader and his relationship with the with the Emperor. But yeah. when it comes down to it, he is Star Wars. I mean, the the, the Skywalker, most notably him, it, it is Star Wars. I mean, that they're the family, the first family of Star Wars, the first family of Force users. So it, it's good stuff. Anyways, back to Luke. Do we have any other speculations uh, for Episode 8? Or I think we pretty much covered them all. Yeah, I don't as know. As far as what I we mean... think he's going to be doing. He's going to be, you know, obviously we're going to see him training Ray. We're probably going to get treated to some flashbacks about what led him to put himself in the exile, which would show Ben Solo, hopefully Ben Solo's turn, or at least a, a, a heated exchange between those two. We should get to see some training with Ray. We're thinking it's going to lean more towards force training over combat training, because obviously the girl definitely has some skills in that area. And that we may or may not see Luke do a little fighting himself, and he may potentially perish. So yep. I think we've touched on all bases. Now, usually during these Star Wars casts, we'll also touch on any recent news, and we actually do have some today. Um, I just threw up a post on entertainmentboot.com. I guess Episode Eight production, or at least one of the units, is now filming in Croatia. So, of course, people are out there with their iPhones and their Android phones snapping set pics and leaking shit left and right. Um, I, Being in the business I and being a Star Wars fan, I find it very hard not to cover that type of shit. So don't look at it if you don't want any spoilers, although I don't think it's going to spoil anything. But from from the, the looks of these new set pics, they feature a bunch of aliens. It looks like they're going to some sort of ball or like a party. But okay. the look has a very prequels type of look to it very clean very modern looking sets uh not the old school look we we got in episode seven so i'm yeah. hoping that's just because we're in a, a fairly advanced society and there's some sort of party going on i don't know why we'd be going to a party out maybe they're gonna do like a spy scene like i said none of the none of the big players are in any of these pictures it's just shots of aliens and people wearing practical makeup and stuff yeah, uh, but, I'm, but I'm hoping Johnson isn't trying to channel the, the clean, sterile look of the prequels in Episode 8. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is going to be a... I mean, we're going to have a, a new host of planets we're going to go to in Episode 8. Um, so one of them might be, you know, a, a more advanced civilization. Hopefully it's not, you know, like Naboo or they don't pull back a prequel planet or something like that, but... I mean, I guess it depends on how it's done and what the purpose of going there is. Well, if anything, if you look at some of the shots, Nick, they're it's all practical, which is, I guess, a good sign. I didn't yeah. see a lot of a lot of green drapes or blue drapes hanging. I mean, they were in the streets of this Croatian town filming. So it was just it was just some of the the dress and the vehicles were in there. Just instantly, I went, oh, prequels. But, <laughs> I have faith. I, I don't think they're going to fuck this up. Disney won't let them fuck it up. JJ won't let them fuck it up. So it, it just is something interesting. So if those of you, if you're like me, you can't help yourself and you want to consume as much Star Wars as possible, you can check out some new set picks. I don't think there's any other important news about uh, Episode 8 or any of the one-offs, unless I'm wrong, Nick. Do you, have you heard anything that we haven't talked about? Nope, nope. This week's been pretty quiet. Well, last couple of weeks have been pretty quiet. I guess one thing I find curious is that we still have not gotten a trailer for Rogue One. 
Yeah, especially since it's going to be, I December. mean, it's still December. I mean, it's supposed to come out December. I mean, I guess they may be waiting for Star Wars Day, May the 4th, for, you know, to do God, it. You think that they'll wait that long? Wait, are they trying to do like a 10 Cloverfield Lane marketing campaign where they literally just fired up eight weeks before the movie drops? Or Dude, they could. I mean, I don't think they need they... to sell it. I'm just saying for, you know, fans like us, I, I'm dying to see something. Yeah. I, I think Rogue One it, it has great potential to tell an awesome story. Uh, I just think it's curious we haven't really seen shit. I mean, even The Force Awakens, we got the first teaser of Finn popping up in frame pretty much a full year before the movie released. So I just I just think it's it's odd that we haven't seen anything yet. I mean, it could be yeah. a good thing. It could be by design. It could be a bad thing. Maybe they're not liking what they're seeing in in post, and they're doing a bunch of reshoots. Who knows? Yeah, I haven't. And, and like you said, man, it's been really quiet. I mean, not even you know stuff from the actors or stuff from the director. nothing. Dude, like, we haven't even gotten a fucking poster. Yeah, like I mean, the only image that we've really seen is that is that one kind of ensemble shot of all the uh, of right. all the main characters kind of sitting in what looks like a an X wing hangar. Yeah, and, and I guess some of the props were on display at a, a geek convention over fair, in the yeah. UK. Yeah, toy fair in the UK a few months ago, but nothing official really. So yeah, it's it's definitely interesting that they're deciding to to hold back any kind of marketing for it. Uh, I mean, even this far, I mean, we're only, I mean, shit. You know what? You know where we might get it. If it's not star Wars day, um, captain America. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Cause that Civil is a big War Disney. Could, could be a, attached to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Call. Well, let's go ahead and put this uh, Star Wars Budacast to bed, my friend. It's good talking to you as always. Hopefully you people out there can discern some sort of speculations from our babbling, but hey, we know our shit. We're just trying to make educated guesses about what may be happening right now in the Episode Eight production, and hopefully some of them come true, and I'm sure some of you are hoping some of them don't. We will not know until 2017. So stay tuned until then. Hopefully we'll get some more leaks, things to spark our imagination. But we hope to be doing another Star Wars-centric Budacast within, let's just, at this point, Nick, let's just say within the next month. How's that, people? I think we, I think we can commit to that. Although Baby Haywood is on the horizon, and I'm sure that will cut into casting time. <laughs> yeah, man. Because <laughs> I'm about to start my own Jedi training, be it a girl or a boy. This this kid will definitely be indoctrinated <laughs> to what its dad likes, without a doubt, until it can make its own choices in life. So, Nick, anything you want to plug before we wrap it up? Nope, man. I think uh, just go to Entertainment Buddha, read all the Star Wars news. All right, rock and roll. All right, um, it's me, Matt Haywood. You can follow me on Twitter, at Matt R. Haywood. I actually re- would really love for people to start following me on Instagram because I've become obsessed with Funko Pop photography. Not only do I buy the living shit out of these things, but now I take them outside and do photo shoots, photo shoots, or I digitally edit them into backgrounds. Yes, this is what you do, people, when you almost approach 36 years of life. <laughs> uh, but I absolutely love it. So hit me up on Instagram at Haywood Pop, H-E-Y-W-O-O-D-P-O-P. I need I need those follows. I need those likes, people. I need to feel special. See, I'm 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 millennial, but I'm thirty almost thirty six years old. It doesn't make sense, but that's how that's how it is, man. I'll say this too: those those photos that you take are awesome. Like they're, they're getting remember, better. They're getting better. Yeah. I'm working on it. Just like I remember one of the ones you took where you had the uh, the Game of Thrones characters like set up in like a little snow alcove. That was fucking yeah. awesome. So, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah nuts, I literally I go out <laughs> in like scout locations and I'm carrying around the duffel bag full of fucking Funko Pops. I was doing it throughout my neighborhood last night, setting them up because we had some good sun. I was setting them up on fire hydrants. Whatever. People already think I'm nuts. I don't give a shit. I love Funko Pops. So (laughs) I'll leave with that, people. Make sure to hit up entertainmentboo.com on a daily basis because it will make you a better geek one post at a time. Bye for now.